Hello everybody, today we're going to be making fresh vegan fettuccine pasta. This is Maxwell Bates. We're going to start with 300 gram of all-purpose flour. Ideally, you would use like a double zero. And so we're just going to pour it into the stand mixer. You can do this by hand, but it's a lot of work and effort and it takes a lot longer. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make a little like hole in the middle just like you would in traditional pasta dough making. You're going to make like a little spot to put your water in. Now we have here 300 grams of water. What you want to do is do half the amount of water you did flour and you'll seem really dry at first but work it some and then it'll come together. Okay so we're just going to pour it in and then we just lower it with the dough hook attachment on it and then lock your KitchenAid in if you have one of them. And then we're just gonna bring it up to speed one to first or the lowest speed you have to just slowly integrate the ingredients so the flour doesn't go everywhere. Okay, so now it's kind of pulling apart and lumpy sort of thing. It's gonna be sticky on the top, but what you're gonna wanna do is pull the dough off the top of the dough hook and back into the in here and then close again and then lock. We're gonna bring the speed up to two. Now we're just letting it mix. It's gonna take a little bit. When the motor starts really struggling, you know when it's just getting ready to put on the cutting board or if you're working on a like traditional countertop, you can do it on a countertop. Just make sure that you clean the countertop really well. Or until cohesive consistency. But if you're doing it on a table, it should be shaking the table very vigorously. Okay, so now it's getting there. You want it to have a consistency of like tacky Play-Doh, if you have ever used that. This is still needing some kneading, so I'm just gonna lock it back down and turn it back on. I'm gonna end up turning up the speed to number four. Nice thing about this dough is once you get it all incorporated, you don't really have any goopy fingers from doing it. We make it really difficult to knead by hand, but that's why we have a stand mixer. Okay, so now you can see it's starting to become shinier. When it gets much smooth, when it gets shiny, shiny, then just like when you take Play-Doh out, we're gonna take it out and knead it by hand for a little bit. But after we're done using the stand mixer, stay tuned because later on in the video, I'll show you why hand kneading the dough is important. It's almost there and ready. You can see it turning much smoother. And so we're just going to turn it back on and just let it keep doing its thing, saving you from a really intensive upper arm workout. So now we're going to turn it up. So now you can hear it having a more difficult time and it's shaking around. So now we're going to turn it off and knead it by hand. So turn it down, unlock it, bring it back up. This is the part I mentioned earlier. It's much less sticky now. It's much more like Play-Doh. And so now we're gonna take some flour and just flour your working surface and then rub your hands around it to spread it. You could use a sifter, but I find this works just fine. Put it down there. And now we are just gonna knead this together and we're just gonna knead, knead. We're just working on developing the gluten in here. If you want, you can pull it together in the center and then eventually get a nice top ball and it'll keep the surface nice and top. Or you can do the traditional roll and then flip, roll, roll because this dough is much drier than other pasta dough is. You want to have it lower than you so you can put your weight into it. Use your upper body, not just your arm, because then you won't get as tired out. If you use your upper body weight, it's much easier to knead the dough than if you have to just use your arms, because if you're using your arms, you have to like really work at it. But if you use your upper body weight and lean into it, it's much easier, it requires a lot less effort. So now we're just folding the dough into itself, making the ball round. You push in with this hand and then you stick the dough in with your thumb. This way it gets you a nice hot surface. And then when you're ready, you can either roll it out now, but it's gonna be a little difficult and you, would, you still have cut up into portions. Or what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this sit. You can let it sit for 30 minutes to an hour. Or overnight. Just the more you let it sit, the more it'll relax. Up to a point. But if you don't cover it with something like a cloth, it'll dry out. So cover it with a cloth, or you can wrap it in clean fill, but I always have a problem with it sticking. So cover with the cloth method works much better for me. Okay, so we'll see you in a little bit. Hello everybody, we're back. The dough is all rested, and so we're gonna take the cover off of it, fold the top over. We're gonna need this for later. 
then take it out of the bowl, dust off the excess flour on the top. So, we're gonna take a nice sharp knife. Sharp is important. And we are also going to be using a scale for weighing out our dough. So, I'm gonna place it on the scale. I have it on the grams measurement. Put the dough on there. It is 900 grams. So what you're gonna wanna do is split that into four sections. Or another way of doing it is cut down the middle, put your hand on this side, and then rock, and it should uh, split apart, and then rock, rock. And if you did it correctly, they should have divided in divisible quantity. If it's within 10 grams, each one is 10 grams off, you can, uh, it's just fine. So they're all about around the 225 grams mark. And so now we're gonna roll each one of these into a ball and you can do it by hand where you do like the hole and then in the middle thing. And the dough is much easier to work with now because it's been rested and it'll get you a nice tight ball like this. Or you can do the other way of working with it is just kind of Get it, get the outside well covered in flour. And then what you're gonna wanna do is roll them against each other. It works better if they're a little sticky, but if you roll them against each other, then stay nice and even. This is a trick I picked up from Paul Hollywood from Great British Bake Off, and it works very well, in my opinion. And that way you're also doing two balls at the same time. Or you can do the more traditional roll in your hand method, but I personally like the roll against each other. Too nice, pretty, that we're gonna put over here on ceramic dish. Make sure you flour the bottom of it and put your balls right there. And we're gonna grab the other two and do the same thing we did previous to the last one. Okay, so now we have them all done. So now what we're gonna do, just cover them with a floury towel. You can use the same one you were using earlier. So we're just gonna put it on the table, grab some flour, and shake it down. You can use one with a linty section. You just have to use more flour. Ideally, you would have a more flat tea towel, or a koosh would work also for this. Or you could just wrap them in cling fill. I have a fine most of the time that they stick that way. So we're just gonna cover this. You wanna prevent as much air from getting to them as possible so they don't dry out. So we're gonna transfer them over here to this bowl right over here. And then, oopsie there guys, forgot the handle, that's important. Okay, we're gonna put the handle in here. Okay, and another trick is use a wet paper towel underneath so it doesn't slide around as much because if you don't wanna have to use a clamp to clamp it down to your table, it has rubber feet, but just this way you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so we're gonna have it on the largest setting, which for this is one, and we're just gonna plant it with our palm Make sure it's thoroughly covered in flour, and we're just gonna roll it through the machine. What we're doing is we're laminating the dough. Okay, so now we're gonna grab it and flour our working surface thoroughly. Then it's okay if you get flour on you. It comes off really easily. And now we're gonna flour our dough again, so it's it's better to air on the side of caution, put a little too much flour on there than not enough. But you don't want big bumps, if ideally. But if it gets all like dicky and bumpy, just means you need to laminate it more. So what we're gonna do is fold over the edges into the middle and then fold the sides over. And now we're gonna stick it back through uh, our machine. Okay. So now we're just gonna fold it over again itself, but this time we're folding it over the side that we folded it against previously. And then we're gonna fold that one more time over top. And we're gonna run it through again. So you can see it coming together much more. You can't see the lines as much, but this time we're gonna be doing the fold over this way, and then we're gonna run it through the machine. If you drape it across the back, then you don't have to hold it. Okay, so it's getting a bit long now, so what I'm going to do is take your knife, you can put it as it is, or you can cut it in half, doesn't have to be super precise, and then put the extra half in your dish for right now, and we're going to flour this half on the top again, and run it through one more time, and then one more time. Okay, so now the lines on the thing are basically all gone, and so what we're going to do is a little trick I figured out. 
tip, take a rolling pin, one with movable in, internal one, that spins around like two handles, and you're gonna want something that you can hold on to. And so you're gonna bring it through the machine and then to about halfway, and then what you're gonna wanna do is take one side of it and then the other side of it and pinch them together so that they join up, so then they're one piece of dough. Make sure you pinch the top and bottom of each section of your conjoining set. Then we're gonna put our rolling pin right here, and then we're just gonna roll it by holding the rolling pin, and just slowly, it's gonna get longer and longer by a little bit. And then eventually, we're gonna, once this is smooth again, like it was during the lamination, we're going to bring the size all the way up to number five at one notch at a time. And see, this way you don't have to deal with re-putting it back through and feeding it and having it get stuck. It's much more helpful and necessary when you get to thinner sheets, especially things for like stuffed pasta. When it's so thin you can see your hand through it basically, that's when it's really especially important. But you can also, if you want, since you're on a double roller, roll it back and forth if you want to cheat a little, but just be careful that you're not stretching it too much. Okay, so now the top and bottom side pieces have conjoined together. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, going to set this down on the table and we're going to do number two. We're gonna continue rolling. And we're gonna roll a couple times around in number two. Now we're gonna set this down and move on to number three. So now we're gonna move on to number four. We're gonna set this down and and now we're one away from our final thickness. And see how the rolling pin is much further away now. Okay, so now we're gonna set this down and we're gonna move on to our, to our final thickness, which is number five. And so we're gonna roll it a couple times through number five. It's much thinner. You can actually see your fingers through it just lightly. And we're going to take the rolling pin and slowly bring it down to the table. And then we're gonna take our knife and cut the dough in half. And since it's floured thoroughly, they won't stick to each other or they shouldn't. And so now what we're gonna do is move this over here and then take our strips of dough over here and cut one more time. And we're gonna place it in here. Okay, so now we're gonna do the, the other piece of dough. And one, one circle should give you about one medium sized plate of pasta. Keep in mind, this is oil free, so it's much lower in calories than pasta with oil in it. It's still just as tasty. Now we're gonna take it and run it through the machine again. Move it a little further down and do the same pinchy pinchy. Give it a little bit more flour. And we're gonna put the rolling pin in, and we're gonna do the rolling pin thing. And if this happens to you, where it's thicker on one side than the other, just fold in the sides, and then pinch it, and then continue rolling. And it'll just make it slightly longer amount that you're careful to be watching both sides and not pulling the rolling pin too hard, but giving enough tension so it stays somewhat taut. You want it just like slightly droop. Not like this where it's like pulling on it, but not like that where it's tons of room. So just where it's like a hammock where it's laying on it. There's like a little curve in it. So now we're almost done. Is you can see it's almost toward the end of the cutting board. Cut. You're gonna want to flour these, and then once you flour them, you can put other ones on, on top in the, like the middle side. Okay. So now we're gonna take the last one and roll it out, just like the other ones. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can use your hands. Just make sure you use the back side of your hand because it won't stick as much as the front side will. You just have to slowly move it back and forth. Okay, so now we're gonna cut this and put it in here. Now that we have all our pasta right here, we're gonna take our strip that we just finished rolling and we're gonna take the, the handle and bring it, and we're gonna use the cutting attachment on this. This is what gets you those nice, pretty, perfect noodles. Fly it over to the other side and just grab it with your hand and 
see you get these nice pretty noodles if they stick because I like it thinner so if you are a little thicker they don't they'll fall apart much easier but they don't they don't really stick that much right now so you just pull them apart if you if you don't want to have to pull them apart use setting number four and then just pass them in a little flour and set them to the side of your cutting board and take your next piece and do the same thing a little flour grab another sheet move them to the side if you want to store these put them in a container with a little flour in your freezer and then you'll have fresh pasta ready to go um, when you take it out of the freezer and just put it in some hot boiling water. It should only take like 90 seconds or less or when the pasta comes up the top of the water or slowly. But in my experience, I find that we like it so much that it doesn't last that long in the freezer. But it'd be a great meal prep idea. A little flour, toss them into a little nest and then take your next strip Okay, so we have them all done, and now you can just do the rest of them, the rest of these, or stick them in the freezer or refrigerator. I would use them within like the next two days. I would make sure you wrap them in clean fill or parchment paper. So I'm Max, this is Maxwell Bates, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Click the little bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Leave your comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video.